What brings me to this meeting is that um, you know, we uh, recently announced that we just received uh, FDA, <clears throat> excuse me, FDA uh, clearance um, to use our small molecule known as ADUS-100, which is a synthetic cyclic dinucleotide which uh, binds to and activates sting. Um, in particular, uh, sting itself has, in humans, has uh, there's five different alleles, and we showed in published uh, last summer in Cell Reports that the particular synthetic sting ag agonist that we uh, developed um, activates all known human sting alleles and that was in combination uh, with showing uh, very potent activity in aggressive um, mouse models of cancer where we could show by local activation of sting within the tumor microenvironment led to uh, development of a T-cell response that was systemically effective. What we will be discussing on, on Wednesday is really will be a first in human uh, clinical trials to target sting. And so that will be the you know, um, uh, inaugural um, clinical study targeting the sting pathway. So with this uh, program has been partnered with Novartis um, which has an exclusive um, license to all oncology for sting agonists. And uh, the phase one clinical trial will be one of the reasons we wanted to partner with Pharma. It will be a very large phase one study. It will be a two-part clinical study, which in the first part will be in about 25 patients. It will be just a typical dose es escalation study to define the therapeutic index. What we found, and I'll be talking about this on Wednesday, is not surprisingly for um, an, uh, an agonist that activates the innate immunity, we see sort of a bell-shaped um, dose response curve where you know, defined by at lower doses, where you see no activities over what we think is a fairly broad therapeutic index, we see a combination of both local activation of innate immunity and priming of T-cells um, that are systemically effective. And then at too high dose levels, um, as you would expect, you can induced um, a cytokine uh, storm that is, is easy to uh, detect as it's happening, but it's dose dependent, and that you know, kind of defines the, uh, the uh, um, bell-shaped dose curve. And that will be the first part of the clinical study, is to define what that therapeutic index is. And what's really interesting about this program is that I'm sure you uh, are very familiar with the you know, terminology hot versus cold tumors and you know why is it that some uh, tumors have a high degree of infiltration and um, what's been shown at least in the melanoma setting that's due to um, the uh, tumor resident phagocytes like macrophages and dendritic cells have an interferon beta transcriptional profile that turns out to be sting dependent and so really in the second part of this um, uh, phase one study will be um, segregated into two different patient cohorts, each of which have uh, 50 subjects, um, and they'll be in both UV-induced and non-UV-induced tumors. So UV-induced tumor, tumors like subset of Merkel cell, um, uh, melanoma, squamous cell cancer of the skin, and then non-UV-induced tumors like breast, um, like for example uh, lymphoma, which is another target uh, that we'll be evaluating this phase one. And what's through heavy biomarker analysis, what we'll be able to ask the question in the setting of um, UV-induced tumors like melanoma, do we, for example, induce a higher degree of infiltration or more importantly, kind of convert a non-inflamed to a T-cell inflamed microenvironment, anticipating that those patients will give a higher response rate than the current 50% or so what's observed with immune checkpoint inhibitors. But you know, from our perspective, it's also very interesting as beyond like non-small cell lung, MSI high, colorectal cancer, melanoma, those are all um, indications that where immune checkpoints can work as a single agent in other malignancies with lower mutational burden, you don't see that. And um, so what's really exciting about this study, we'll begin to ask with, by activating the sting pathway, will this be an opportunity to convert a non-inflamed tumor microenvironment to an inflamed one, and that will presumably make those patients more responsive to immune checkpoint inhibitors. We were very early into the sting pathway, and it was actually, I won't go into it, a derivative 
from our other programs and we were able to get a very early insight why it was such a, um, a significant um, and central node of innate immunity in the setting of cancer, which is absolutely you know, linked to the development of um, uh, tumor-specific immunity. And one of the more powerful aspects of this approach is that you know, we're using a small molecule via activating what's the central node of innate immunity to develop a T-cell response that will be unique between different individuals because we all have unique immune systems. And so this is, we think, a very powerful way to use a small molecule um, to, for patient-specific medicine since we're ostensibly developing T-cells that are unique to a person's uh, unique antigen repertoire. So down the road, you can imagine other uh, formulations, other approaches to deliver these compounds systemically. Initially, we'll be delivering them to cutaneously accessible uh, lesions. Ultimately, we, and very early, we will be um, asking whether we can give these sting agonists into uh, tumor-bearing visceral organs, for example, lung and uh, liver, um, and, and many others. Um, and uh, the other interest we have in this pathway, actually, is that uh, chronic expression of sting is implicated in a number of autoimmune diseases. So the company is, has a very active um, uh, program in developing antagonists against the sting pathway. We have essentially everything under a single umbrella, ways to activate the innate immune system with our sting agonists, with our uh, recombinant listeria uh, platform, we can ex broadly express tumor antigens that are relevant um, to you know, any given indication. We have partnerships, for example, with Janssen in addition to our own programs. And then, of course, with the antibodies, we can modulate those responses. I mean, we all know that immune checkpoint inhibitors are sort of the foundation uh, now of cancer immunotherapy. But again, what's clear in many indications, um, that's uh, not significant or not sufficient as a single agent. And so there's an absolute uh, requirement, you know, for modifying the tumor microenvironment in addition.